Well, okay, so the, the thing I want to talk about, like, you know, like I said, feeling bad until we die and the things that seemingly we're never going to get rid of. Um, sorry to bring it up again, but I want to talk about, about superhero movies because I have, I have three articles here that I'd like to uh, take some time to, uh, to go over with you guys. I'm just gonna, not going to read all of them, just, just, just highlights of each. I wanted to, I wanted to read one of the, uh, this really bad WandaVision article on the episode with Adam Friedland, but we just never got to it. And then lo and behold, I wait a week and there's like three even worse articles written about WandaVision. But I mean, I want to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, getting context, back into writing. Matt, there's something you said. Uh, <laughs> something you said earlier today uh, when you were just chatting about like setting up the show or whatever. You said, um, "If all politics is dead, then all we have left are manners." And it's like yep. it's it's it's, it's this. It's this weird moment, and I think like like these like like our our like our this, this culture war mentality we're in right now is is evidence of that because like what is culture war if not just a contest over what kind of manners people are allowed to have in public, and it, it just seems to be like right just yeah mm-hmm. because, yeah things without consequence. I mean, we were talking about like I, I was looking forward to the Biden presidency because I thought it had potential to be just as if not more funny than the Trump presidency. But we've sort of been wrong about that because we've been underestimating just how much they're hiding Biden and how much like just just how how precious few opportunities there are for him to talk about Aunt Gertie and shit like that. And another thing I got to say I was wrong about is this idea that I was expecting, like, if if Biden became president and Trump was out of there, like everyone would just sort of like like this culture warrior like shit would just sort of like the sort of melt away a little bit because I thought, you know, most liberals don't really give a shit about this stuff to begin with. And it's only useful to them, like as a as a cudgel in a political contest against the right. But if anything, the, like the the level of hysteria that exists um, around shit like superhero movies and cartoons and bullshit like that, shit that you see every day, like on if you're online or whatever, has only has gotten into an even more frothing boil. Because I think in the absence of like you know people, like when when they come face up to against the fact that like there there is nothing that like the Democratic Party or Biden is going to do to like deliver on your behalf or like solve any of these problems through politics, all that's left is culture war, and I mean that for both Republicans and Democrats. I mean like the, the Republican Party has nothing to say to anyone except other than like oh they're trying to take Dr. Seuss away from you, mm-hmm. and it's just as true for the Democrats. It's just like all yeah. we have is this hysterical frothing fucking ongoing just people are winding themselves up tighter and tighter and tighter about manners essentially i think that's that's what culture war stuff is about and placing even more emphasis on these cultural products as a means to like as a way to achieve things that politics not just can't do anymore but like don't exi- don't exist at all to uh, fulfill that function yeah and so i so i just in light of that like this is the first article here this is, this is also in the Washington Post. This is an opinion piece. It says, America is incredibly divided. Superheroes can teach us how to come together again. And it's just mm-hmm. like, even if you believe that's true, it's just like, like why are we placing, like, why, why do they need this responsibility? Like, you, I mean, I guess you can read into the, the, this moment in culture and try to, like, pick out certain things that you think are optimistic. But, like, doesn't it, doesn't it, isn't it just a really bad sign that we're just like, oh, like, I, I know America seems more divided than ever, but you know what? Uh, Justice League could, could you know what? way out of that. Uh, it, it may seem like uh, we're doomed uh, to be annihilated by uh, our own uh, inherent uh, flaws uh, that can, we cannot overcome within the system that we've created, but maybe a supernatural, super-powered force will emerge <laughs> yeah. to, to rescue us <laughs> from certain doom. Yeah, yeah. I mean... And- it's literally like... A, you're saying I want to, I want them to fulfill the fantasy that they fulfill in the movies. Uh, so I'm just going to save us. I'm jumping ahead, like the middle of the article here, but it says, um, but when you see a godlike alien cooperating with heroes out of fables and Greek myths, okay, I'm just going to pause right there because oh boy. it is one of my like least favorite little like canards that I've seen pop up more and more over the last like you know year or months, especially as the Zack Snyder Justice League movie comes out is people defending superhero movies with the line that you don't understand. Superheroes are modern mythology. And it's, <sighs> it, this is just like Apollo and Zeus, but for America in the 21st century. And I'm like, it, it just, it, when I hear that, it, just, it's, it feels like sandpaper being rubbed against my face. Because not well, only is it thing- not true, yeah. but it, it's, just, it, it's, it's just such a transparent attempt to imbue some kind of like cultural or historical value to, 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 you know, to pop culture trash. 
And I'm not even I'm not even opposed to pop culture trash, but it just it becomes grating when it has to be like given this importance that it's not warranted. Well, that's the thing is that people say, oh, you know, it's just like uh, the ancient Greek myths. It's, you know, ancient Greek culture wasn't just talking about what Hercules did all day, all day long. <laughs> yeah, like, they had other about, shit going yeah, on. Like there were fucking too. like Sophocles and Aristophanes and shit. It was not all, hey, remember the time that uh, the, uh, he fucking really, he, he fucking cleared out a stable really fast? It wasn't <laughs> just them recounting the stories over and over again. If we're going to do this dumb shit, like, actually, the Dark Souls games have a better claim on me. <laughs> like, a, m- a million times more. Like, I, during our entire Biden conversation, I was thinking about how much it relates to Dark Souls. Whereas, <laughs> yeah. uh, for uh, listeners of no, the show, like, listen to the show, pay, all, pay close attention. This is Felix's interest of the week. We'll see how long it lasts. <laughs> I mean, we're on week three of this. Okay, week, all right. So, so it's fairly forecast worse is things. good until quarter three, <laughs> and I think the thing we're getting into of fall of 2021, Komodo dragons. <laughs> I think we're going to get really into Komodo dragon conservation and awareness. Uh, but, like, yeah, the messages in, in, like, the adventures and shit is, like, it's good to love your friends. <laughs> like, yeah, friendship is what good. The fuck is, it's well, all Barney. Everyone just watches Barney now, which is fine. Like, if you like watching Barney, that's fine. Just how, like, comic books used to be, like, it was for the guy at your job who always smelled like cum. Yeah. And, like, yeah, that's <laughs> fine. That's fine. But, like, it's like if everyone watched Barney and was like, "This is act. This is actually the best thing ever written." And you're you're racist if you don't watch Barney. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, you're actually right. Yep. So uh, when you see a godlike alien cooperating with heroes out of fables and Greek myths, you might not find it so hard to imagine more productive collaborations in the real world. These teams don't just bring everybody together to work for the common good. They also make room for people from vastly different cultures and experiences, and they triumph when members learn to respect each other's abilities and perspectives. What are groups such as the Justice League or the Avengers, but non-governmental organization with more capes and fewer acronyms? (laughs) Oh, my. Now now more than ever, we need stories. No, they're not. By the way, no, they are not. (laughs) S.H.I.E.L.D., for example, is literally a government agency. This is the They They are paramilitaries of the U.S. empire. This is the most ideological thing. Which, of course, is also what NGOs are, but yes, the ideology. This is the most ideological thing I've ever, like, (laughs) Human Rights Watch are the Avengers. Like, holy shit. I'm fucking short-circuiting. That's incredible. That's like, this is like, this is like a liberal Hadith. Yes. This is amazing. Yeah, and you know what? That's honestly uh, one of the few useful things about the Marvel movies because they are just such hegemonic trek, but they at least are fairly uh, straightforward in saying that, yeah, superheroes, if they existed, would be part of the state apparatus, that there is no, like super the, the DC fantasy of Superman and those guys is that there is some sort of authority and power beyond even the state you know, like it is, and it, and it, and it, things like justice mean something to it. Whereas the Marvel movies tell you pretty outright, no, no, there's just America. And then we are people who have like the most technology to fight on behalf of America. So it goes here, uh, now more than ever, we need, uh, yeah, that's, that's another little trope. When I, when I, now more than ever, we need, whenever I hear that thing in any piece of cultural criticism, it's just, it's, it's like, Oh God! It's just like it's like a caustic. It's like a chemical burn on my skin. Yeah, yeah that's mm-hmm. like yeah, that's one of those rhetorical tricks that only works on Homer Simpson. <laughs> so he goes, uh, yeah. Now more than ever, we need stories about larger than life people who are concerned with founding something altruistic that will outlast them. You know what's amazing about this? You could write this article about Family Guy. <laughs> <laughs> I have. Thank you very much. <laughs> you could be like. Listen, we're all there. We have Peter. He has a good heart, but he can be bigoted sometimes and small-minded. We're Meg. We're everyone hates us, but we're also a part of the family. The baby is a gay genius, and that's part <laughs> of America. And he works for the government. Everyone has that that guy in their neighborhood who jacks off a lot. Jeffrey Fekelman. That's China. <laughs> Like it's, like yeah. the same thing. This is the last two paragraphs I want to read from this. Uh, the goal of all this team building? 
to establish something that can outlast changes of membership and the occasional apocalypse, an organization that is bigger than any one member. In an age when multinational cooperation is on the wane and trust in public institutions at a low ebb, watching superheroes invest in creating a shared symbol can be downright inspiring. This, it, Matt, like this is exactly what you said. She, she, like this person is, they, they want like the, 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 the fictional function of superheroes to be performed by superhero movies yep. in the real world. Yep. Well, because that's the liberal <laughs> concept. That's liberal idealism. It is. There is there can be no political uh, power exerted. You're you are alienating your power away to this structure. Things change because people's ideas, the people who govern the structures, ch ideas are changed, and things like culture change them. And so the only hope for the future is a literal superheroic intervention, where enough of us watch these movies that we all are transformed internally to behave differently and that literally is the only redemption there can be within this system that is the only redemption liberalism can provide is the function of you know, matt, a fucking superhero and matt i was actually i was thinking it also too um i mean again this may be like tangentially related to my to my ongoing gripes with uh cultural criticism and superheroes in general but um there's something you said the other day um again just in one just in an unrelated conversation where you talked about how American, like, like the dominant ethos of like American liberalism is self-restraint in the service of mastery over other people. And the dominant right. strain of yes. conservatism is the complete freedom from self-restraint in service of mastery over other people. Yes. And it's it just all about, about like, how you justify the, the, stick, you know? the yeah, mastery. Which, it's all about how you justify the mastery. For the liberal, it is one self-restraint uh, that gives one license to control others. Yes, it's it. That's the proof of it's virtue. It used to be that you were one of God's chosen, and now it is that you are. You have the correct virtues to order society correctly, and that's why you should have power. Whereas for the conservative, having power is the justification for having power because it gives you the ability to assert authority through compulsion. And it's, yeah, it's honestly, it boils down to your relationship to capitalism. Whether you're related to finance and 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 uh, and trade and 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 money, or to direct exploitation of land resources, which is why we're now in this like fourth uh, century of war between like American land-based money and uh, finance money, and that went from the Civil War to the Progressive Era, and now into this fucking idiot culture war we're in. I mean, yeah, like it just. Like, like I just said, like I like to introduce this topic. Like I said, it's just like it's a feature of our culture, which is now really synonymous with politics because it just seems like uh, politics as a thing that can intervene in the lives of people or provide like a a, a a motivation to organize large numbers of people, like the mass politics that Adam Curtis talks about in his generate in his documentaries is is gone now as a model for like what politics is and it just seems like and we've talked about this before that it, it just like what's being replaced with is culture as politics and like that's the terrain yes. in which people can compete with one another to sort of like have some sort of uh, metric by which to judge like who's in charge or who's winning and losing in in our, our politics culture whatever and like what, what it really does is mean that like we don't have a culture anymore we like we don't have a this is the death of culture and i really yes. i'm sorry that it's such a cliche but like I, how can you not associate superhero movies and superhero culture with this phenomenon that i'm talking about and also yeah, with, just, they want you to love the bomb they want you to love the pillow smothering your fucking frontal lobe and you know like and it's hard and it's also it's hard to separate from me from like i said like in 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 the climate of like cultural criticism and the way which which we consume and like talk about art in our culture and just everything in general like like entertainment of any kind is been worked up into this fever pitch of like this sort of neo-victorian moment of like yeah. it's just this mutated form of kind of like old american anglo puritanism and 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 protestantism but that is reasserting itself in this like ever more fever pitch in the way people uh, argue about or have to like have to consume or have to like this absolute mm -hmm. dog shit, this this drivel for babies, which is what we're talking yeah. about here. It's, and it's the clo it's the closest thing to church is going and experiencing these fucking mega culture moments that affirm a value that you are you now uh, represent by having witnessed it. And but also it's about like the people who aren't taking part in this phenomenon are also like suspect. And I don't mean like I don't mean superhero movies like specifically. I just mean like there's this whole this whole thing about people like you demonstrate that you're in 
by, uh, you know, like I said, performing, for lack of a better word, like the, these certain kinds of uh, cultural tropes. And if you're not doing that, then like that, or if you're simply like, you could be doing the opposite and being like, oh, I'm, I'm for freedom of speech and I'm against all this like woke cancel culture stuff. But if you're simply not doing anything, that also marks you as sort of suspect. It marks you as sort of like outside the body. And like, it's just sort of like any influence culturally or artistically otherwise that comes from that needs to be sort of quarantined and purged. Um, so speaking of things I'd like to see purged from the culture, let's talk about WandaVision. Because I, 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 I have two articles about WandaVision that I think, I, I think you know, I think basically are, are, I hopefully will illustrate more clearly what, what I'm trying to articulate here. And I think this should be a good warning right now. Uh, if you're concerned about any WandaVision spoilers, I would recommend that you turn off the podcast right now, then unsubscribe from the podcast, then never <laughs> listen to the podcast ever again, and just simply learn life. Just learn yeah, no, life. Yeah, it's time for you to take up some grim truths in Romania. <laughs> you need an email list. You need you need to start generating passive income. <laughs> yeah, you need passive income. You need to do twelve hours of sparring a day, which is good for your brain and prevents COVID. And yeah, no, I don't think you've ever learned a grim truth in your life. All right. Well, okay. It's time to start facing some grim truths. Uh, this, yeah. this is the first one. There's an article in Salon.com by uh, Melanie McFarlane, and uh, it says here the headline is. One division concludes by giving Martin Scorsese the MCU film he always wanted. I just like, yeah, well, yeah, but he didn't want any of it. He didn't want he, one. He, didn't want yeah, it. Like, no, he, he was just, not going. You know what I want? I want a good Marvel movie. He didn't want one at all. He was I like, love make how, other movies that aren't like that. I love how their thing with Scorsese is like, oh, who gives a fuck what he says? And then just like everything after he made just like a passing comment about how he doesn't like these movies, people are like, oh, yeah. Check this out, you fucking old piece of shit. <laughs> this episode of Barney is exactly what's good about your movies that I hate. That, that's what, that, that's what the, Matt. That's what you were talking about earlier. Is like it's not enough that like all this shit exists and is like so hegemonically saturated our culture. It's like they, like the, the people who are invested in it can't stand anyone else not being also like affirming yep. that like this is yeah. good. Yep. This is good. Yep. We all like this because deep down inside they know it's shit. They, they know, know it they sucks. know it's fucking they, junk food for their they brain. They know it sucks, and then the, but the thing is, it sucks, and yet I, it's still here. It's I watch it. It doesn't do what I want it to do. I want it to make everybody nice. I want it to make everything better, but it won't do it. Could it be a problem with it? No, because I can't conceive of a world where that thing is not part of my integral conception of myself. It's everybody else. It's everyone else's fault who does not appreciate it like I did, and yeah. so and so even though your whole idea hinges on this thing working on people whether they want it to or not you have to second yourself to the battle of badgering other people but really all you're doing trying really trying to do is convince yourself and you're arguing against the things you know are true but can't admit well i we were talking about culture war earlier and culture war is interesting from a political or like political media especially perspective because it's one of those wars where no side wants to win Yes. No, because God, no. You, you know, no, yeah, winning yeah, isn't you, the point. Fighting is the point. Right, fighting is the point. You sell more of everything by fighting it. You don't it's actually the, it's want the dynamo. Win. It moves the thing. Right, right. You don't actually want things like Dr. Seuss being canceled or whatever to stop happening. You want that to keep happening because that keeps the whole thing going. Yes. It's why our modern wars never end. It's the same basic reasoning. But the one area where you do want to win a culture war is if you're Disney. Mm hmm. Because there's money at stake. Yeah, because it's like, oh, yeah, that's total dominance of the marketplace. It's different for us. We can own the entire marketplace. No one can own the entire marketplace in politics in America. By definition, then it's not politics anymore. Right. But, yeah. in, but in media, you can. Disney yeah. practically does. <laughs> Thanks to politics. But if there's any real victor of the culture war in the past 20 years, it's these fucking assholes. Oh, absolutely. The they consolidators, have... the monopolizers everywhere are winning while everyone else just keeps fighting. But it's not enough for them to have won. You have to like it. You don't just have to like it. You have to. You have to. You know, see see how uh, you know whatever fucking you know micro targeted media property relates to you is like uh, a, 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 a half Jewish person who like oh, only recently learned how to masturbate at age twenty four. <laughs> so wait, Felix, whatever, Felix like, there is media out there for me. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. There, it's for you, for me, for all of us. It's how we met each other. Is we're all that thing. Um, but it's yeah. It's not enough. It's a constant like 
dance in the end zone where they're also flopping. It, yes. They won, but they're, it, there's a constant wounded act. That like the, per- the perfect example of that. Validation. The perfect example is like when our friend Jesse Hawkins spent like two weeks just winding up like this the the Snyder Cut fan community, yeah. and I, I had to learn the phrase the Snyder Cut community, and he was just doing an obvious bit about how he doesn't want his kids seeing Batman say the F word. And for like weeks, <laughs> yeah. for weeks, he had these cretins just like being like, Jesse Hawkins is trying to take away the Snyder Cut from us. You haven't even seen it yet, and you're trying to destroy it. And it's like, you won. This totally unnecessary movie. Yeah, but it's going to suck and they long. know it. it. Even if they love it, it will not be what it needs to be for the amount of attention they've put into it. There is no movie that could be what they need it to be after spending all those months and years talking about it. There's nothing that could hold up to that. So by definition, the experience of watching it will be disappointing. And they will have to be able to put some name to that disappointment. And it's going to be all the people who didn't take it seriously or were biased against them because of Disney or because of wokeness or whatever. They have to put it on someone else because they cannot confront the fundamental fact that, what they, uh, that their life is uh, uh, oriented around bullshit. I, I have been... Um a fan of several like kind of niche cultures they're not necessarily super niche but definitely like outside at their time of like of mainstream coverage and you know if you got a hundred people in a room you probably wouldn't get 10 of them who like this thing at the time like for for this instance we'll use mma mma when i first started watching it and when i got really obsessed with it it was not a huge thing it definitely had a very loyal fan base in the united states that could sustain it, that could make the owners of the biggest promotions tons of money. And it was definitely like an active subculture, but it wasn't, it was less popular than it would uh, grow to become. And the thing I always noticed with this was, this was, I don't think MMA has ever been better than this period. And this isn't just nostalgia. The quality of the fights were often better. It just, it was a better sport for a lot of reasons that I've talked about before. But, there was this constant insecurity with fans of not getting the same respect as like basketball or football or whatever. And it was always bizarre to me because it's like, who gives a shit? How would that impact your enjoyment of this at all? But that insecurity went on to be one of the forces that destroyed the sport because it, 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 it caused it to shave things away. It caused it to be standardized in a way that in their attempts to make it like any other sport stripped it of many of its outside marginal qualities that made the fights better. Um, this is this, you know, whether it's Zack Snyder or Marvel or fucking WandaVision or whatever, same thing. It's, this is already baked into it. Like the way of making it mainstream is already baked into it because it was built by a robot. It was built by an algorithm. They know exactly how to take this thing that used to be, you know, like the, like MMA, a very profitable, active subculture in comic books and build it into something that everyone, like everyone from like the 53-year-old mother of two in your office to like your 14-year-old brother watch. They're all, they all get excited for it. But they still have this attitude of, a sub, of an insecure subculture, which is insane to me, given the amount of money and viewership on all this shit. But there, there's a there's a political element to this as well, and that I want to get into. And it's this idea that like making fun of these these gigantic corporate products, or like, or even or being critical of them, is like as I alluded to earlier. It's like is currently it's interpreted as like evidence of betraying some kind of like crypto fascist or reactionary belief inside yourself that like you, that you don't take one division seriously because it's like about a modern complicated woman and not, not uh, a, a sleazy Italian criminal. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is something I love. I, I am fascinated by the Snyder people. I find them way more interesting than the Marvel people with the mm-hmm. Marvel people, like the rabid Marvel people, like everyone's a Marvel person now, but like a rabid, like they pretend to be the characters on Twitter. I mean, that level of involvement. And yeah. there are a lot of those people. Uh, the, what makes the, them so uh, unsympathetic is because they have won more than anybody. Because right. Marvel it, is yeah. the whole the whole thing. Like the Marvel right. is the is the. I mean, it's Disney. It's Marvel. It's the it's the it's right. the victorious side. Uh, the Snyder people are sort of. I mean, obviously within the greater firmament, as as superhero idiots, they are uh, triumphant. 
but within their the thing they care about, the battle over like uh, aesthetic hegemony, they're losers. So they have right. a chip on their shoulder, right? So that, that actually that's a, exists, right? So that's what I was going to say is that with the Marvel people, I don't well, I don't really get mad at any of these people individually because it's like, oh, everyone's just mentally ill from the past yeah. like ten years or so. Yeah, no, it's it's coping you, mechanisms. I it's don't think opium. you should get personally mad at anyone for bad posts. It's like everyone's just going fucking crazy. Yeah. You can make fun of it, but yeah, I don't think you should get mad at it. But for the Snyder people, they're interesting to me because they give me an insight into what the future will be. Because Zack Snyder, no matter what you do to him, he's a white guy, right? Who oh, makes, yeah. Like, who made 300 and all this shit. There's not a lot you can dress him up in. You know? Yeah. His last name's Snyder. He's another just American fucking crowd uh, or whatever, whatever he is. Um, he's a crowd from Green Bay, I believe. Wow. Uh, but you uh when you like criticize him i've seen like a lot of my friends like just get screamed at by snyder people they they have like the external traffic of if you just saw it on the side of your eye passing by you would think it's like you know really woke people yelling at you over something like you made a joke about suicide or something or fucking whatever but they're using all this like marginalized platform deep platform language at the behest of just a director they like, and it's completely removed from politics. And I, I realized everyone kind of does that now. Everyone is the the triggered antagonist in like a Ben Shapiro confronts yeah. college student video. Mm-hmm. And Trump people are like that. Like you know, like we talked about where it's like we need to you need to let us heal after we lost. You're invalidating, blah blah yeah, blah. Yeah, yeah. And yep. it just everyone whether like i the snyder people seem mostly apolitical they probably lean democrat because that's what happens with media hyper consumers but even that will polarize yeah and everyone regardless of their politics regardless of whether they're like you know fuck cancel culture or like they're uh, just equally moronic like cancel culture isn't real and it's good like mm-hmm. type thing yeah they're all gonna talk like that way because the only thing we'll have left the boomers get the dying light. They get Joe Biden. They get the they get Joe Biden linking himself with the fire and the kiln of humanity. <laughs> yes, and, and, and they get to die with him, happy, mm-hmm. happy, thinking the fire went on forever, even though it's being reduced to embers. But the younger people, Gen X and younger, all they can do is just portray weakness to each other to get sympathy, because hollow sympathy is the only thing left. <laughs> and in one of our futures. Everyone will talk that way from the guy from the white kid who calls you the N word on Xbox live to, you know, the most triggered college student in the country. Everyone will be like that. But uh, this next piece, Felix, this gets to what you were talking about, how but everyone just wants to cultivate a, a sort of righteous self pity and other people, you know, and uh, this one is oh, about yeah. how WandaVision re might re- re- WandaVision mm. rewrites the myths of surviving trauma. Oh, boy. And it goes here. My uh, favorite topics, Disney, <laughs> Disney properties and trauma. <laughs> Bring it here. They just, I'm just I'm jumping in the middle here. It says, they just committed to their love for each other when Wanda was forced to sacrifice him to save the universe from Thanos, only to helplessly watch as the mad titan brutally tore the mind stone from Vision's skull anyway. This is so <laughs> fucking stupid. This is so fucking <laughs> stupid, dude. Nearly, <laughs> like, oh, the big purple guy who hates Excuse the world. Me, but <laughs> these <laughs> characters have uh, names, and and I have an emotional relationship to them. I mean, I like okay, everything's stupid. Like I, everyone here is like cried to media, or, like felt an intense uh, attachment to something that's stupid. We all have, but it's like, man, this shit's really fucking stupid. <sighs> and what oh, makes the, it stupider? The, the purple, the purple guy who hates half the world killed my. But husband. what makes it no? What makes it? What makes it worse than just being stupid in a way that, like, I think all normal people should be able to relate to? Like, you know, what I'm saying, like, I, I have plenty of like dorky cultural interests or things that I care about, probably to an absurd degree, or at least ones that strains, you know, rationality or my other otherwise developed critical faculties. But what makes it like beyond stupid into like actually kind of offensive? Is the need to shoe in to shoehorn in like actually like real world problems like you know you know poverty or people experiencing like grief and trauma into this bullshit where it's just like like no like like so I'm just gonna read here it says uh, 
In a socio-political climate shaped by movements like the Women's March and Me Too, trauma survivors deserve nuanced portrayals in the media that humanize us, not to reduce us to cruel caricatures. WandaVision subverts this trope by confronting, rather than ignoring, the complex and de debilitating effects of severe, repeated trauma. As a TV series, the show affords Wanda the opportunity to move through the entire reality of her trauma, ultimately transmuting her loss to further her personal growth and sense of self. Wanda meets her matches in Monica Rambeau and Agatha Harkness, who both catalyze her inevitable confrontation with her trauma. A precursor to her forthcoming appearance in Captain Marvel 2, Monica's arc deliberately echoes Wanda's, having returned after the blip only having returned after the blip only to discover that her mother had passed away years prior. I love that this article just like it's about oh it's about how it's showing how survivors of of, of trauma you know are, are nuanced and complicated people as you will they will continue to be nuanced and complicated in next summer's Captain Marvel two coming soon. So. <laughs> the brothers Karamazov too more brothers. <laughs> the idiot he really screwed up this time. <laughs> war and peace and war again. <laughs> and it goes here. Uh, Unfortunately, Marvel's choice to whitewash the Maximoffs undermines the effectiveness of the relationship between Monica, Wanda uh. and Monica, a black woman, making it hard to ignore the misogynoir underlying their interactions. <laughs> Monica is positioned as... <laughs> Monica just, is... Just, oh, just, my God. I mean, I'm imagining people... like It's like those PMRC housewives in the 50s or in the 80s who would sit there listening to Wasp records and counting the swears... But they're doing this for things they ostensibly like. Yeah. That, well, that's the most important thing is to hold things accountable. You got to hold things accountable, even yeah. things that you're just watching for fun. I don't you think it's all right. Accountable. Yeah. I don't think it's all right that uh, halfway through the adventures, ultimatum, uh, apocalypse, endgame, that um, there's an extended scene where Thanos uh, put on a yarmulke and was like, <laughs> I'm doing this. I'm doing all this evil purple shit because I'm Jewish. <laughs> Didn't think that was okay. Um, what, I, what I like about these articles, though, is that like most of them are just basically like in a fifth grade book report style, just reciting the events that happened on WandaVision. And not having, I, like I said, I watched the first episode of the show, but not having seen largely like any of this, so I have no idea what they're talking about. And then reading them describe events happening were like after she returned from the blip and the Mind Stone had changed the purple guy into another, into a uh, robot villain. Uh, um, and then like like shoot like I said like but like in the context of talking about like survivors of trauma, it is it just it adds like a really just another layer to this where it's like uh so he goes on to describe it here. Monica is positioned as Wanda's peer and punching bag despite being in the midst of grieving a loved one herself. Wanda never wounds Monica's body, but she is aggressive towards her as a sword agent in a way that she wasn't with her actual antagonist, director Tyler Haywood. It isn't until their confrontation in breaking the fourth wall that Wanda actually hears Monica, allowing her to break through her wall of denial and projection. I can't control this pain anymore, and I don't think I want to, because it's my truth, Monica says, in an attempt to reason with her, which seems to resonate, before, resonate with her before Agatha interferes. I, just, I love that they're putting all this like psycho babble in between what is just basically... A, it's like when a kid describes to you a show they really like that you've never seen, and they just talk to you like you know everything about it. And they just say, and then, and then, and then Agatha comes, and, then, and Agatha's trapped in, in the mind realm as the nosy neighbor. You know, the, 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 the way they treat, treat this stuff is actually, it is really kind of quasi-religious because the assumption built into any argument about the emotional resonance of any uh, Marvel product bakes into it that you've seen all the other Marvel products. Like in isolation, you cannot argue that these things have anything like the thematic weight you're claiming. And none of them will, would even, it, they would admit that, I think, if you told them. They'd be like, no, you have to have an investment in this. That means you have to have like a religious fucking faith in these this dog shit to transcend the fact that this is not this art cannot be giving you the emotional responses you think it is. You're literally de deceiving yourself because it's the only thing you think you can relate to because you have an impoverished cultural uh, diet because this is all you get. We all live in a cultural food desert. It wasn't just Wanda's sweatsuit morphing into a modernized version of her iconic costume that set up a chorus of that sent up a chorus of cheers from viewers streaming the finale in the early hours of March. I know Man. I had that. <laughs> I had that chorus of cheers. A WandaVision fully human. It was like the clapping for carers. Some at March fifth, it's five o'clock. Everyone <laughs> went, Yay! 
it, it's WandaVision's sweatsuit is morphed back into a modern version of her iconic costume. Her iconic costume. Uh, by the way, Scar- Scarlet, by the way Scarlet Witch was like one of the most D-list characters in the Marvel. Con- I don't know anyone who's ever fucking given a shit. And about- she's probably spent like in the she's been in the movies probably like a combined 45 minutes. Less than that. Like and way less like than this that. person. It's like we're so, all of this, by the way, all this stuff about her relationship with vision that we're supposed to feel. It literally boils down in the in the text, like not what they're bringing to the text because of their whatever they're telling themselves. But in the actual text of these movies, the entire architecture of this relationship that they build a whole show about where they're going to explore grief and it's the way it works through your life is a two minute scene where they're like strolling on a cobblestone street in London and vision like looks like Paul Bettany before an ogre attacks them. <laughs> it's like, it's, they're like, uh, I don't know if we could be together. And he's like, I know I could be with you because I love you. Well, oh, there's some gremlins. And then they fight them. And that's what the whole thing is based on. This is not established. Art is supposed to make you feel by like creating characters, like real ones and relationships so that you can have an emotional investment in them. If you're just watching these movies, that's why you're supposed to care about this entire show. So he goes here. Um, she outright defies the myth that survivors are only stronger because of their pain or forever broken by it. With the MCU set to explore its own multiverse, its first limited series offers fans a less fatalistic reality to its grim source material. The show succeeds where stories like House of M fall short. Rather than be resigned to a life of lost and doom, Wanda chooses to save herself from being consumed by her powers. She faces her truth and takes responsibility for the pain she caused by committing herself she takes to better understanding her powers. Since her first appearance on the big screen, Wanda Maximoff has been portrayed as a deeply caring person trying to do the right thing, driven by her strong desire to love and be loved, even after relentless no, heartbreak. not at all. The events of WandaVision affirm that she's been powerful and strong on her own all along. But just like any human being needs to be held and supported in times of vulnerability, the success of WandaVision proves that as the MCU heads into this new era, it can only benefit from extending this type of nuanced humanistic storytelling to its more marginalized characters as well. And uh, it, like, this gets back to what you said at the beginning, Matt, where it's like, it's like every, it's just, everyone assumes that, like, that we're all, we all feel like, like powerless or traumatized to varying degrees, certainly by like the last year, or just, like you said, like just, just alienated and feeling like that we have no yeah, power over our world. And I think like that, that that's, that's the, what makes these superhero products so narcotic is that like we're just waiting to be imbued. Like we're, we, this fantasy of having a power, having powers to like shape reality or to, to be invulnerable to harm. And it's just like, well, we're all like, you know, naked and afraid basically. We're all like squealing little mole rats. But this idea that like we can overcome our trauma or deal with it or like build something productive out of it through these fantasies of having unlimited godlike power ourselves, I think is um, psychologically um, a little bit iffy. Also, did you notice how even in the show that she's like praising to the heavens, uh, there still has to be that critique that uh, that they uh, they othered uh, Wanda's character because she's not a, like a gypsy like she is in the comic books. Did you that part? No. <laughs> and so, and then now, oh, how, no. like, the, the now, and, and of course, like, there's uh, one of the bad characters, I guess, is black. So that means that there's misogynoir in having them be an, a, a, a bad character and that, that further work has to be done to, like, uh, humanize them. It, like, that, that is where the engine, the little engine is keep spinning. It's like, even within the thing that I'm, enjoying in my enjoying of it uh i lose it it doesn't give me what i want so why because there's something wrong with it because there's there's it's not quite woke enough in the in the specific way to make the culture perfect and if i can just pull on that thread it's going to make everything okay but really in reality you're making that up to have something to talk about about a thing that is not worth talking about but, but like but also like it's offensive because it's in the, it's in this framework of like like this is like a legitimate way to deal with psychological problems that you're having yeah you know like it's just that, that like if only we had better more humanized portrayals of people going through a rough time than like a, right yes the rest well, of us as yeah. like we dealing felt, with this shit like, if we yeah. if we didn't other each other then we would build institutions to allow people to live with dignity 
Well, we're not doing if that. If we got it so. from TV and movies. And that's <laughs> not- the only place we get that. We don't actually, you know, build power in our lives because that's impossible. We can only all hope that we just reach a, a phase shift in consciousness thanks to TV. But the TV is all garbage created to make you watch more of it. So it cannot do the thing you want it to do. Well, there we go. That's, uh, that's just, I mean, just, just a, few, a, a few thoughts, a few articles on WandaVision. And By the way, guys, we are watching the Snyder Cut, though, right? Yeah, I definitely. Mean, obviously. I mean, we have to. Of course. Go we ahead. have to. We got to. Uh, I really don't want to, but yeah, we have to. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know how Felix is going to get four, through this. Four hours, topic. baby. It's, this it's, thing it's, is long. It's, long, it's, long I, it, it's 20 minutes longer than The Irishman. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to kill myself. Uh, <laughs> I, Felix, well, no. I There's trauma. Deal, deal with your trauma by watching WandaVision. Yeah, you got to confront yourself. your trauma. Yeah, you're right. You're right. All the characters had their houses burned down when they were four. <laughs> yep. This movie really spoke to me. I, I, well, maybe I can get killed by a Snyder person during it. Like I yes. started talking about how much I hate it. And one of them comes to my house with a gun. Yes. Perfect. 